everybody. I'm here today to teach you how to automate scheduling using a tool called Calendly. I don't have any affiliate link with them, mostly because they don't have an affiliate program. So don't worry, I'm not paid to say this. I use Calendly a lot though, and I've used it for almost four years now, and it's been an incredible tool. Uh, I personally hate all of the unnecessary back and forth that goes into somebody scheduling a call or saying that they're going to and then never actually showing up to the meeting. But you can... Now, let's see a Calendly link in action. What you see on the screen is my Nicaragua course. I have a free YouTube course on my Jack Pittman Nica channel, which is all about Nicaragua. And it's basically 90 minute of one to two minute snippets that are all of the common problems that people have asked me. So I basically made a database of everything I've ever been asked multiple times or any foreigner has ever mentioned that I've heard about because I know people could use this. I made something useful, right? And it's all free. So the way I monetize it is by having a consultation service where people who are interested in living in Nicaragua or they want to learn more about it or they already live here and they want to learn where they can access things, they can talk to me for $20 per 30 minutes, which is $40 per hour. And this enables me to earn money off of making free stuff. And I really like that, okay? All I do is talk about the link in the video at the end, and then boom, they just click on this. They click on the Nicaragua consultation. They already know it costs money because of the video, and they pick a time that's available, and then they confirm it. They enter in all of the required information, which is all customizable. I've added all of these fields, obviously. And then they pay and you can pay either using PayPal or Stripe. You don't need an account. They can literally pay just by whipping out their card and entering it right here when they click this button. They don't need any kind of account. And then they just click schedule event. I would receive the money and then I would receive an email for the first time. They've never reached out to me. I don't know anything. The first point of contact is an email saying I've been paid and saying the date of the meeting. And this makes things much, much smoother because from that point, I can reach out to them, you know, if I want to change something or I want to give them more information to prepare, but it's basically all done. And Calendly is amazing for that. See, I charge people for this. So I have to use the paid version of Calendly. But if you're not charging anybody and you're just doing free calls, then this tool is totally free for you to use. And I'll get into how to set it up now that you've seen what it looks like in action. Now that you see how Calendly works, let's talk about the settings and the kinds of things that you can set up with Calendly. I will not go over every single feature in this video, just the ones that I think are really important. You can have multiple events. If you noticed when the person went to my Nicaragua call, on this page right here, they can only pick one event. But let's say that you want to offer a free consultation or a paid call. Then you can have multiple different events, some of which are free, some of which are paid. So we can make different events on this page. For example, let's say that I enabled this event. I think I can go up here and then click on just like that. Now, if we go and we refresh this, then boom, suddenly we have this option as well. And this is actually something that was part of like a test. So don't worry about that. You can set up multiple events. And then what you have to do in each event is set your availability. Because when people look at a time slot, they're going to see what you've said is available. And you could make this working hours. For example, the default you see is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. That being said, that isn't a good availability to have for a Calendly link because a huge portion of people interested in your services that are able to pay for them will have jobs. And the vast majority of jobs work from 9 to, you know, 9 to 3, 9 to 5. That's 
the most common time to be at work. So I don't think you should set your availability to the times where most people are working. You should set your availability to times that work for you, but are available for other people. And they should not be the same every day. For example, if you have the same time window every single day, every weekday, what about the people who are in the Philippines? What about the people living in, you know, Germany? What about the people living in Argentina? All of these different places have different time zones. So you should have at least one or two days in your availability that allows you to accommodate these people in different time zones. But of course, this all depends on your target demographic. If you know for a fact that the only people who will even bother booking time with you are people who don't have traditional jobs, then sure, make this your availability. But just remember, keep in mind, you want to make it convenient for you, yes. But also, if you don't have available time slots for people when they're actually free to talk to you, then this whole process won't even work because there isn't a slot that they can even pick that works for them, okay? So the availability here, this is really important. Set your availability up and you can customize individual events. You can make it one general availability that applies for everything. Uh, personally, I have like a custom availability that basically is all hours of the day except when I'm sleeping, okay? Now, there are some really cool uh, customizations that you can add into the individual events. So let's go over here and let's go to edit. We're going to go down to the questions here and you can see that you can customize the fields that people enter. Okay, so I ask people what they want to learn about, I ask them for a WhatsApp phone number, and I ask them if they're coming here by themselves or with their family, because all of these things change the entire context of the conversation, right? You can add tons of questions, you can do whatever you want here. You can make it so they're optional, you can make it so they're required. I won't get too much more into that, okay? Some other cool things you can do is all of the notifications and automation. You can make it so that people automatically have um, calendar events injected into their Google Calendar or whatever calendar they use. You can set up automatic reminders so that 30 minutes before your event, the person gets a text or a call or a email saying that their thing's gonna happen. Actually, I correct myself there, you can't have them get called. You can just have text reminders. Um, you can also have it show up a day before as well. And you can also have events happen after. So for example, after somebody books something, you can redirect them to a specific place. For example, for me, when they book time with me, they get sent back to this YouTube channel because it's where they came from, basically. But you could send it to any website you want. There's a lot of customization you can do here. And you can also make it so that after the call itself, they receive a follow-up email that asks them for some feedback. It asks them how it went. It sends them off to some other place. There's a lot of customization that you can do here. I mentioned you can also collect payments. You don't have to, and if you do want to, it's paid. The options are PayPal integration or Stripe integration. So to collect payments, you will need a PayPal account to connect to Calendly or a Stripe account to connect to Calendly. And keep in mind, anyone paying you will not need a PayPal account or a Stripe account. They can just pay if they have a debit card. They'll pay through Stripe or through PayPal, but they won't need to make a, an account in order to pay you. It's actually very simple, all right? And the next thing to do is a couple kind of rules that you can set up with availability. So earlier we were looking at the general availability. Now I'm looking at my custom hours for this specific event. You can define how long the event is. If it's, you know, mine's 30 minutes, uh, but it can actually be longer. A lot of the consultations end up going for an hour or two. 
and then usually they just PayPal me because I make it very clear that it's $20 per 30 minutes. So if it's an hour, $40. Two hours, $80, okay? There's these little rules that you can make. For example, you can see there's different time slots each day. And you can also add time before and after events. This will help give you some sort of buffer time. For example, if you need five or 10 minutes to prepare for your meeting, then it really doesn't make sense to al al allow people to book a call from 1 to 1.30 and then another call from 1.30 to 2 and then another call from 2 to 2.30 because you will have zero time in between each meeting. So you can add these before and after blocks that allow you to have a break, okay? That is really powerful. It enables you, again, to make this a lot less tedious and make scheduling and meeting with other people who want to connect with you better for you and better for them. The last part of this video I'll talk about is some of these additional rules. These are further customizations. So it means that the start time increment is basically how often in your availability people can book a call. So if you have a 30 minute call and you have five hours of availability with no breaks, that means that there's 10 slots available. But if you have a 30 minute call and you set this to 60 minutes, that means that people can only book calls at one, at two, at three. They can't book a call at 2.30, at 3.30, etc. Now, one of my favorite conditions is the event start time. Um, I personally don't like it when people book a call an hour from now. I have no time to prepare. I have no idea if I'm even gonna see the email before the call happens. So I force people to not be able to schedule anything within at least 36 hours. So that means that if today you wanna book a call with me, the earliest you can talk to me is one and a half days from now, okay? And you can also add um, days that are a maximum, basically. So let's say you only want this to be bookable five times, but you're available any hour of any day. You can set this number to five, and that means that no matter what, once the fifth event is booked for that day, it doesn't matter that you have availability scheduled for the rest of the day. Nobody else will be allowed. All of the time slots will be closed, okay? Then I personally recommend that you use the automatic time zone display. This means that the people will see the time zone they are in. And that just makes it easier for everybody. Um, you're gonna see the time zone that you are in. So that can be a little bit confusing because uh, Calendly is going to show you, show them their time zone and show you your time zone. So if you think you're just looking at their time zone, you might get something wrong. But don't worry about it too much. This is very, very useful. As you can tell, there are more options, but now at this point I've covered the vast majority of the useful features of Calendly. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!